So let's just get into what what uh, what, what 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 day of the week it is. It is the United Nations International Day of the Teacher. It's Wednesday. Oh. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am your host, Spencer Cartier. I just wandered in and I am Rhoda. Rhoda? And this year is Frank looking like the biggest Eagles fan in the world and he has every right to do so because the Eagles are flying high as Eagles do at 4-0. The only (laughs) undefeated team in the NFL. No big deal. The last time this happened, do you know what year? That was 1999. No, it was 2004 when Donovan McNabb led the Eagles all the way to the Super Bowl where he then threw up and lost to the New England Patriots. Threw up. He threw up. He was he very vomited. Yeah, it was, some people say he had the flu. Some people said he was a little nervous. Maybe he had COVID. The first ever recorded <laughs> um, COVID patient. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. But um, how you doing? I'm okay. I believe that another Philadelphia team is doing good as oh, well. The Philadelphia, Philadelphia Phillies, Phillies had their playoff berth. Which I hate the sound of. I know it's like B E R T H, oh. and I know what it means, but playoff birth sounds like you're given birth to the playoffs. So what? It's B E R T H, which is like a, like a the birth of a boat or something. Yeah, it, it, it's like the yeah yeah. I don't know what the definition would be, but it's like I get. I mean, they're not actually far off from the same definition, right? Like a birth is when you have something. And a birth is when you obtain something or, or like the, the start of something. I don't know. Oh, that's not, birth birth. Yeah. Like, uh, they, they, but anyway, in layman's terms, they're, they get to go to the World Series. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they're just going to the playoffs, which uh, they haven't done in, in a long time. Over okay. 10 years. The fight and fills. The, the fight and fills. Um, everything's, everything's on the up and up for the, uh, the city of Philadelphia. Well, the, the word is in the Bible. So. You know, Philadelphia is blessed to begin with. It is. Uh, the, the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. I forget when or where, but it's there. Yeah. Um, anything fun this weekend? Did you go to any more of these uh, these yarn festivals? Fiber festival? Um, no. I I was out of state. Uh, I was on a tattoo. Um, a tattoo journey. A tattoo tour? <laughs> a tattoo journey. A tour. Uh, but is that all I did? I can't remember. Uh, it's been raining. Yeah, it has been raining here, um, which is the aftermath of the horrible tor- tornado. Oh, right. Yeah. The, the ter- wind tornado, the also southern- wind and rain tornado, also called a hurricane. Southern United States, west, eastern side, eastern yeah, seaboard. Like Florida. 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 Ian? Ian? Ian. Ian. Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian came in and ravaged yeah. the lands. I've seen, I saw some of the videos and the photos. It's, it's crazy how powerful these these things are. Yeah, I know. But 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 um, you know, we have uh we have a connection to St. Augustine, which is northeast, and um they had a lot of flooding, boats had come up on the land and a lot like your standard um hurricane damage, but they actually had to put out a statement to say Give your aid elsewhere. We're good. Not just give your aid elsewhere, but like Come back, like to vacation. Oh. We're fine. Like we're fine. We are a coastal town. They're the oldest um, city in the United States. Yeah. We have been getting hit with hurricanes for it's. It's not since like sixteen hundred. Not like uh, New Orleans, where it's like our city is built. Yeah, based on the dams that are protecting us. So right. Augustine's like uh, with or without right. people here. Saint Augustine. So stands. they're saying. You know, you can book your hotels. You can all the hotels are open. The restaurants are open. The roads are open. The docks are open because um, social media share, you know, regular people get mad at like clickbait and headlines and stuff. But but they do it themselves. Yeah. If they see a a particularly, you know, um, extreme video or photo of a hurricane, then and it says on it, Hurricane Ian, they share it. Yeah. A lot of them weren't even Hurricane Ian. Oh, really? Yeah. They were from a years before. Yeah. Or, or, you know, I'm not saying that there wasn't true and actual damage. And if you're in the area, you should go and be a Red Cross volunteer and help the people. I think in, um, was it 
Fort Myers or it was, I don't know, some yeah. particular Florida city got hit really hard. But Florida is a big state and people got a little overzealous sharing footage and telling whisper down the lane stories that all of florida has has sunk away and um so two things one did you see uh i guess this goes to them always knowing to do we went to the saint augustine alligator farm yes and i sent a video of them putting their uh ostrich or some yeah. kind of one of these big birds in the bathrooms right because it's like it's it's the most protected place and yeah he'll be fine in here right he'll have he'll, he won't get nervous or be in a cage right um but it got, as an extreme example of what you're saying, I was watching this video and there was just a guy on the street talking about what he does is nothing to do with storms. He waits for disasters. Oh. Um, whether it be attacks or you know, bombings. And he goes, he travels to that country or the place because the tickets become dirt cheap. And he says, there is always this over sense of like right now, to your point, I would think, I can't go to Florida right, right. now. There was just a hurricane. It, it, but it's like, they're fine. And so many of these places, like, that, you know, what was that? Like, that big cargo explosion. Right. And it was like, a big cargo explosion. It's like, oh, yeah. In um, Belize, or I don't know, wherever the country was. And he said, I went that, the, the next week. Right. Why? There was nothing coming from that. Right. It's like, but people just, you can't go there. There's an explosion. That's like, funny. This idea that we, we do get, even though we have the fastest information sharing ability that we've ever had in history. It still is like hits you with hurricane in Florida. Right. Nobody's sharing St. Augustine local restaurant, just operating normally. Right. That's not exciting. Right. It's, exciting. it's not exciting. Is, is seeing, um, and even a bad can also be exciting uh, is yes. a city underwater. Yeah. And then nobody, so everyone leaves it yeah. at that. Like, let's leave it at that. Yeah. Nobody shows the the boring rightness of back to normal. Right. And and these people need money. All the waiters and waitresses and hotel owners. But uh, not to dis not to uh, neg not to negate the bad things that did happen. There is yes. a lot of Florida that needs yes. to be rebuilt. Right. Needs uh, funding. And, you know, has the electrical cars in a row going right. down to fix it. Right. Just saying there, there it's, there's two sides of right. every coin. Yeah. I'm going to make a three-sided coin. <laughs> it is um, Rhode Island Day. Oh. Rhode Island. Rhode Island Day should be on... Oh, I didn't think about this through. I was going to say February 28th, but that's the shortest month. The shortest nut day in, in winter. You know how there's like like sunlight? Okay, why? I guess that would be the winter solstice. Because it's the smallest state. I thought Delaware is the smallest state. No, Rhode Island. By a, by a, by a mile. Oh, you're right. Despite Rhode Island being, only is a mile. Despite being the smallest state, um, it has 400 miles of coastline. Yeah. So it, it only it's only 1,212 square miles. Yeah. And... And 400 of those are coastline. That's, that's all it is. Yeah. Um, it is. Um, it's the last of the original colonies to the, thir- the 13 original colonies in the United States. It's the last one to get on there. Otherwise, it would be 12. Uh, how? It's right there in the middle. Was it like the last one to become a state? Like they were just thought, like this Massachusetts and New York. And then it was like. Um. No, the last state was Hawaii. This is the no, I'm saying last of the, of the, of the colonies. Co- like, I'm, I'm saying how could they have skipped it? They were mad. Uh, who? Rhode Island. Oh, so they were a thing and it was just like, yeah. talk about negating things. They yes. were just forgotten about. The forgotten state. They weren't forgotten. They were invited to, you know, Philadelphia. They were invited to the Constitutional Convention in 1787. Um, and they said, no, we're not signing the Constitution until you add the Bill of Rights. Oh, and they said... Okay, 12 colonies. And the colonies said, you're going to sign that or we're going to tax you. So they were just dragging their their feet. They wanted different things done before they jumped okay, on board. Rhode Island? <laughs> Smallest little... That's like the littlest person. The little yappy being, dog. Yeah, being like, who are you? It's like, uh, you know Zion Williamson? No. Uh, yeah, neither do I. He's an NBA player, but he was, almost, he was more popular in high school than he is in the NBA. Okay. But it, because of his sheer size and dominance on the basketball. Oh, okay floor but there was this video of this little I mean, like five foot seven 
kid um, with with heart and grit guarding him. And he doesn't even, like, get mad at him back. It's like he looks around confused and says, like, who who is this that's kid? That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so that's, that was Rhode Island. Um, also, National uh, Lawn Tennis. The National Lawn Tennis Hall of Fame and Museum is in um, Rhode Island. Now, because lawn, lawn Tennis the same as Tennis on Grass? Like, that, there's grass courts? I guess. Okay. I just watched... Uh, I think t- so. I guess this was before my time. Or at least, like, I don't know. Ten- I've never... But two people... Mm-hmm. Uh, Nadal and Federer. Oh yeah, because someone just jo- someone just retired. Federer. Okay. I think Nadal has been retired. I don't know. I really don't okay. know. But um, I saw this thing where like they were both the best. Like mm-hmm. everyone, if if you know tennis, and this is redundant, but they were the best, and they would play each other. And it right. was it was why it was so cool to watch them is because they were both the best, but they would always go back and forth with each other. So it was you know like when what you does have like back and forth with each other mean like if they ever played, it wasn't. Oh, they were so good. It wasn't one and two. Oh, it was one, so, one, and even uh, when they played. equally matched, which is great. Yeah. For the audience. Yeah. So, um, there's in tennis, there's um, the grass courts and the clay courts, mm-hmm. and which makes it even cooler. They both had two different styles of play. One was like one of them was like undefeated on the on the clay courts. Yeah. But on the grass courts, they were okay when they would go against the other. Was great on the grass How courts, funny. and so they had this funny little game. Oh. Where they made they played on a half and half grass and clay court. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, so then you would switch during the you would switch when the to turnaround. see who's just the best, not on clay, not on grass, but on both. But one of them won. I, there was like there was a long documentary about like how the grass wasn't great, and ah, this ain't a tennis podcast. This is a Christian podcast. Um. So let's just get into what what uh what what what, what day of the week it is. It is the United Nations International Day of the Teacher. It's Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is Wednesday, and on Wednesday, we have a little thing called One Word Wednesday. All right? Right. On One, one Word Wednesday, we picked just one word. Yeah, I, and, and people pay attention because I was talking to someone today, and I said, um, it's One Word Wednesday, and they were like, what's that? And I'm like... You don't watch Crow and Yeah, Crow? I said, yeah. well, Crow and Crow has been doing it for two years, Yeah. so... I guess you don't know what Walk Through Thursday or Dr. Seuss Friday is either. Yeah. You know. Um, that's By the way, we're not friends anymore. I'm sure. I hope that's the last thing you said. <laughs> yeah. Our, our, our one word um, today is excommunicated. <laughs> yeah, right. Is don't talk to me. Um, yeah. One word is that we just pick one word and we talk about it. It gives us some talking points, but we'd like to always bring it back to, uh, you know, real, real world uh, applications. Yeah. You know, it's like ch- the ch- we check the chat, yeah. but... Two sides of the coin we always want to hit is real world applications and spiritual significance because after all, this is a Christian podcast and uh, if everything was created through the lens of spirituality, then every single word should have uh, some kind of metaphor at least. Right. At least. So back to your union address of the United Nations. <laughs> they they have, um you know, there's fun days that, that you can look up and it's like, we live in America, so you'll see like the National Day of Toothpaste yeah. and the National Day. No, that's the of- funnest day. I, I, <laughs> I look forward to National Toothpaste Day every single year. Well, there's ones, that, you know, so many like that. Um, the other day, I saw someone was like, "Why isn't there a National Felons Day?" That's but, um, but this is international, and it's not just on a whim. A lot of the days that we look up that are National Day, like say toothpaste, that would be put out by Colgate. Yeah. Or something, you know, it's like a, it's like a promotional yeah. advertising type thing. Um, this is the United Nations, um, the worldwide body, and they have deemed. I don't know if it's every October fifth or if it's some other. You know how they do that first, yeah. whatever Wednesday in October, but it is um, in it, it's Teachers Day. Well, uh, you're welcome for my service. Well, that's why I said we have to do it. Um, as you guys know, I have been teaching for a whopping. Uh, three weeks, four weeks, a I, month, a month. Yeah, I've got Let's just say a month. I've gotten two paychecks, Let's which means I've month. I've been working for at least a month. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been teaching very, very young though. Um, early. you're very young. You look very I'm very young. young. <laughs> <laughs> Despite my uh, wisdom, wisdom, yeah. my wisdom lines, like especially podcasts. And t- unless people watch on YouTube, you know they probably think you're a wizened old, much older man. Yeah. When they see you, they're like, wait, what is going on? Yeah. You know, you would be surprised of my age. I'm yeah. 
13. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I've been teaching. Uh, You're a teacher. So happy <clears throat> happy occupation day to you. Thank you. Do I get a free coffee at the Wawa? It's more than just an occupation, isn't it? It's like, you know, it's not the same as... It's a calling. Yeah, it's like a, a vocation. Is a vocation only religious? No, it's an occupation. But I'm glad that that's today because we can talk about it for 15 minutes. Um, because since I've become a teaching person of a very short period of time, on a lot of the podcasts I've said, when I was teaching these very young kids, right? I have been getting ideas or it, it's reminding me of maybe something spiritual. But I was thinking about something today in particular. Did we say the... What was I say? We said the word yet? Yeah. We didn't say oh. the word, no. Oh, the word is teaching. Just teacher. Just teacher. That's fine, too. Teachering? Te- I don't think anyone uh, could ever say I don't say know if that. it was teaching or teacher, so I kind of... It's teacher. Teacher. Teacher um, day. It's we, not teaching day. We all day. know the greatest teacher. Jesus. 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 So I was thinking about something about what I do, and this is early education. Yes. I was wondering why I like it so much. Okay. And before I talk about why I like it so much, I want to talk about why I don't like other jobs so much. Okay. I'm a person that has a little bit of I don't know, pride. It's not the wrong word. I think about things. I'm a deep thinker. Mm-hmm. And I always think about how like life is purpose. And not I don't want to make this deep. But like, because that's too deep. I don't like jobs because like other certain jobs. Because I'm like, I don't like um, the idea of selling time for money. Because, you know, it's like oh, time's so valuable. And it's like. Or labor. It's like, I'm getting paid just to give you my labor. Which is, I mean, and, and that, I have a very skewed view. Of, like, I mean, this is me personally. Maybe it's just because I haven't found my right thing yet. Well, yeah, for everyone's different. I mean, some everyone's people feel different. that that, that, they're, they're, that, that yeah. their hands are their gifts. Or like, well, yeah, like or they're, they're cooking. Like they put a little sticker on here that, you know, it says made by number 035. And that's yeah. me, you know. Yeah. And I think that's what, like, and so I guess my thought in life is you're supposed to find what you're meant to do. Yeah. And there's so many ways to be useful. Yeah. Now, what what other jobs have made me feel? It's like I never, I, I didn't want to work just like being used for my time. And so, oh, okay, this is it. Then, so then I thought I started thinking about what are the things that different jobs call for. Some jobs call for your labor. Yeah. Other jobs call for your mind. You know, mm-hmm. white collar jobs. Yeah. And. While I'm teaching, I'm like, I, I don't feel the same kind of like, eh, I don't belong here. Like, I don't belong, I don't like, feel this trade as much. And then I realized that there's, a, I think there's a third thing that there's a few, one that other jobs can do. You might not even, you could be a teacher and only be, I'm selling my time and labor. Right. But you're being paid for your care. It is, uh, you know, child care. Right. And so it is. The, my care that you're paying for. Oh. My, my ability to care. You're right. And I find, I, I think that might be the difference of why I like this more. Okay. It's because I was wondering, like, I'm like, like, why, oh, like what, what about this do I like? And it's right. like, I think it, it's, I, I feel like I enjoy the transfer better when it's like, what do we need from you? It's like, not eight hours of you cook. I've cooked food a lot. That was never like my thing. Not eight hours of you and your computer mentally exhausted is like right eight hours of my care. I I, I like that trade. I, I enjoy that, you know, because every every trade, and this goes back to everyone should find their thing. Right. The idea of back in the day of bargaining was you have something I want and I have something you want. You both should be getting something. Right. If you love to cook, you are doing something you love. Yes. And they are they are give, returning it with financial thing. Right. And so then this is like money and I will give you my, I want to give care. Right. I want, I want to put that out. And so I think that's kind of interesting to think about with teachers. Yes, absolutely. Because in, in, um, in the industrial revolution, I believe, isn't that when a lot of things that people used to do could be replaced by machinery, right? Yes. And, um, and there's a whole story to be told there, but what I was thinking was, you know, if your job can be replaced by a machine, yeah, uh, I guess that would knock out the care part. Yeah, I mean, you could you could be under like a surveillance that would maybe call life alert or something <laughs> yeah. for you. But generally, your job can't be replaced 
with a machine because yeah. you are caring and because um the 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 uh the customer the child the you know your little charge uh is changing so constantly so it's not like um the care even of a plant like you, you need to water it you need to turn it towards the sun you need to you know yeah. pull the weeds like a child's there'd be no way to to um, program something to take care of a child because yeah. it, it, it would be con- the needs are constantly changing. Yeah. And, so. um, you know, I, I, as I'm, as I'm talking, I'm still just thinking back to explain leading up to this thought. And I don't, once again, I, I don't mean to say, Oh, well, teaching is the best because I care and you just do it for money. I would really like to even make, you know, like the love language list. Mm-hmm. There's love languages. And it's like, this is what makes me feel like right. love. And I, I do think there is like the equal thing of like a use uh, or a, a, a work or a useful thing. Yeah. Cause like some people want to use that their, their physicality right. or some, you know, like, and teaching one or like something that's care based, whether it's like a hospice nurse or what I do, it's that wouldn't feel as useful to them. Cause it's like, I have a gift or, you know, mentally right. it's, I don't want to sit in a classroom. I want to design the the next tablet that right. will be in, the, in that like yeah you, everyone of course has has these things and it's important to find it but today we're talking about teachers so just like gifts are the best love language today <laughs> care and teaching is the best well, labor gift right and so <clears throat> the name of the the holiday and the and the one word Wednesday is teacher just teacher right happy teacher day but I think it should really say good teacher yeah because um we talked the other day about uh, people taking taking advantage of their position of power. Yeah. And when you have these titles that stereotypically are caring, yeah, like a parent, yeah, or a teacher, then or I even brought up a, a hospice nurse uh, earlier, hospice or, nurse, or an elderly care, a priest, yeah. So it's like even if um you know when you go to court you know and you're gonna be you're, I'm gonna be a witness and they'll say what's your job, ma'am, and then yeah. I'll say well I'm a mother. And I'm a teacher, you know, and then like that kind of puts in people's minds like, oh, like she's a good person. She should be trusted. Um, But actually their teacher is a wonderfully important job, but you can be motivated for the wrong reasons and you can be a bad teacher. So I think it's just a happy good teacher day. Yeah. Yeah. And just like, just like anything. And I think that, I mean, all thing all ties together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's. You you should be doing things that make you want to be good at it. And when I right. worked with with food, I didn't care about the food right. as much as someone who went to culinary school. I, I was watching a, the new Netflix show about um, these food carts, yeah. and like there's like a woman in New York was saying that like she feels like it's her, like it gives her a, right. a drive to be feeding people the community. Right. Like, yeah. Um. So yeah, let's get to teachers while we still have time. Um, the importance of of teachers. I. It's in the Bible a lot. It is isn't. Um, sure. Um, 151, if you, for new international version. We went or back, back there for CIV. You. Oh, I didn't uh, look that one up. Shout out, last walk through Thursday. Yeah. Um, 151 results for teacher, but obviously in the New Testament, Jesus is referred to as teacher. You know, that is his, um, that's, that's his uh, role for the apostles. He is teaching. Yeah. The, you know, they keep, they, he's teaching, but then even when he's not like they will approach him and say, teacher, tell yeah. us how this, what does this mean? Or how do we do this? He taught them how to say the, our father. Um, but uh, it, the whole, like there's 151 and there are, there are warnings in there um, in the Bible about being a bad teacher Yeah, and um, looking out, listening to make sure that you're not with a bad teacher. Um, Job 36, 22 says, God is exalted in his power. Who is a teacher like him? So we can try to be Christ-like and we can, we can aspire to be a good teacher. Obviously, you mentioned God in the very beginning. We'll, we'll never reach that height, but yeah. um, definitely something to model yourself after. If you are unsure of how to be a teacher, this is your first month of being a teacher. Yeah. Um, and I guess that would be a good road to stay on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, what would Jesus do? Like, yeah. in, in a teacher role is always... Um, would as we always be leading the right way and i think one thing especially uh two things that and and i think if you think back in your life you think about teachers that you remember stick with you right 
I think there's some similar char- characteristics. Uh, and I would go as far as to say, I bet if you put a similarities list, they align closer to Jesus's teachings because that is what inspires. And I, I think a couple of them is like lead by example. True. Um, or one of the uh, big thing is, is just the, um, the lack of looking down. Like, how, what's the word for this? Like, like a looking patience? at what? Pa- <clears throat> patience. No, not patience. It, it, mm-hmm. It's care. Like, like love, love and, and and care. It's you can never do something like that's wrong. You right. can never be wrong. How many rap songs have you heard of? I had this teacher tell me I was never going to make it. Yeah, true. And look at me now. That's not a, that's not a good teacher. No. And Jesus never said that to the lost. You know, a lost sheep analogy is the opposite of that. Right. He didn't see someone say, "You're never going to be in my kingdom." Right. He he did the opposite, and and he was open armed and looking for the outcast. A lot. Of, I mean, the the entire. Just as an example of teacher, I'm sure a lot of people have either read or seen. Um. The Freedom Writers, is that a, where the teacher who goes into a lower income school? Okay. Who there's a I, few movies like that. Yeah. Well, this one was was one of the, the biggest because it was a true story. I probably saw it, but I can't it was remember. a true story, and um went into a forgotten about school system. Okay. She was she had no business being there. She could have gone to a, a really good school to a forgotten about uh, high school English class where the kids knew they were forgotten about, and, right. and they didn't care. They were like, we are. We know where we're going to end up. We know where we're going to be. And through care and perseverance and, and a, a complete lack of judgment, ended up turning the class around in way more ways than one. And like, right. not to just spend the rest of the time talking about the movie, but got them really, they never even heard about the Holocaust, got them into it. Oh, wow. So into it that they, they all they banded together had fundraisers and got a Holocaust survivor. Oh from my the gosh, school. I'm gonna cry. Oh, it's a very it's a, it's a it's a beautiful movie. I'm sure most of you watch it. And then I I believe like the percentage of the school that graduated right. and went to college was minimalistic. And like, I'm yeah. pretty sure like, everyone in her class like went to college. Oh wow. It, it, it was like a and like I think that's a good example. Yeah. Instead of even looking at your own teachers. Yeah. Look at this teacher that there's a movie about how great of a teacher she was. And say, as you're watching it, how much of this is Jesus-like? Right. And so you can go backwards and just, that's that's the whole point of being yeah. a teacher. It, it's lack of judgment and care because you spend so much time with teachers. I know. And so both as a, a student, because we're always a student to something. Yeah. Or a teacher, it's National Teacher Day and we're talking about an ed- educational forum, but we're all teachers in some sense right. of who we're with, whether that Absolutely. be whether that be your kids or Absolutely. anyone, like uh, people under you at work. We always will find ourselves in teaching positions. And I think in a real world way or in a spiritual way, you know, even if you're not into them both, I think they co-align with one, the importance and two, how to do it. Right. And it all comes through love. love. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, like it, it's, you hear teachers are underpaid and, and stuff, and and I, I think like like said, good teachers of, of why do they do it, and, and it's that outward care, right? Love, whatever it is, yeah. it, it's I care about the people, right? To grow, I would like to tell teachers um out there, you can just tell me, and even myself, because like you said, you you're, you 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 don't know who you might teach. Someone yeah. might you might be getting on a bus. Any, and, if anyone's a parent, you're a teacher. Yeah, or you know someone. All the time, people would ask you, do you yeah. know how do you do that? And, yeah. and you know, be happy to share with them. Um, you talked about the other ways that people help people. So like you would cook mm-hmm. and, and offer or maybe you make clothes or maybe you make tools or whatever. And in the other industries, I find that you wouldn't try to if, – if you made food for somebody and they didn't want it or they didn't like it or they didn't, you wouldn't like get so mad at them and try to force them to eat it, yeah. you know, and <laughs> eat this, you know. But sometimes I find teachers – they have the one way yeah. and they're like, they just keep trying to shove it down your throat yeah. of like, why can't you get it? This is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I already told you. I already told you. And so if I may be so bold as to to say to teachers, 
um, if they could come at it from different angles, because not everybody wants a bologna sandwich. Not everybody wants, you know, yeah. um, these kind of oh, boots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, teaching is a moldable thing, and I think I use the the lost sheep analogy twice in one go. But that kind of goes with teach. It's not the idea of everyone should be here. If you're not here, you're wrong. It's right. You're all okay. You're all learning is, is you know everyone learns differently they do and you're saying you you all learn in this you know between the lines thing this person doesn't people think i think a lost sheep a lot as physically somewhere else right but the lost sheep could be right there yes. in, in the group right and, and it takes the uh, you know a good teacher to say because that's what the whole i lost sheep is is like well none, none of us are here why are you going for for that right. one? right we all get it yeah, who cares well, about well, them? this one mm-hmm. isn't learning as you and, you're and, right and why are you, why am i going to change my teaching approach for right. this one person because it's about every it's about all yeah of you're so lucky to have something to share yeah um and sometimes it's easier i'm sure than others sometimes uh the kids listen to you and sometimes they don't and sometimes <laughs> they don't and uh and that, that that's a whole that's a whole other thing but yeah. that, that goes to the patience and to yeah. the this the, like the it, it's, it's really it's a teaching is it, a a test of patience mm. and a strength in it. Patience is strengthened. Mm. And a, a lot of it goes to, you know, like if, if you can be patient in one situation then or you can work on that, then you'll be patient in a lot of other situations. Sometimes you'll see a person who is very cool, calm and collected. And it's not because they've had a peaceful life. It's because they've had the opposite. No, you're right. And it's like, you're right. You know, I even find I, like, I agree e- with that. even on, even on a, like I said, I've been there for three weeks, but uh, I just like thought of it today is all the kids were, being maniacs and i'm like i feel like there was two paths that could have gone early mm-hmm. on just getting like so frustrated and today i was just like sitting there calmly as like chaos was going around me and i'm like well, this is uh, you know right. and, and it, it's a peaceful approach you learn it but that's it for our podcast shout out teachers um shout out all everyone because i like we said everyone everyone's teaches a teacher a, everyone's a student everyone's a teacher everyone's <laughs> a student you know like back to love languages i, I think oh i'm rhoda because of rhode island Rhode, Rhode Island. Back to love languages, um, just to finally bring it around. I do think there's all these love languages, and I and I think the same way with gifts is I talk about the importance of giving gifts. Does that mean I'll never give someone words of affirmation? No. And so, yeah, you know, there's people who cook. I cook. There's people who do labor. Oh yes, I do labor. I see what and you're so saying. You whatever you do, you also majors and minors. You also teach, and yeah. you teach in some aspect. So we're shouting that out today. But that's it for our podcast. We'll be back tomorrow for Walk Through Thursday. Be there or be square. Peace. Walk through.